Hello, for this video I will be going over the topic units. Units are one of the most relatable scientific topics and starting off it is one of the easier topics to learn, but nevertheless it is difficult to comprehend when problems become more complex. So let's get started on units. Here's an example of when units come in handy. Say you're going for a coffee run and your friend asked for a little cream and a little sugar. When you come back with the coffee, your friend gets all angry yelling that the coffee's too bitter and you're all like, you said add a little. Here's when units can come in handy. If we replay the situation, instead your friend asks for half of one of those small containers of cream and one packet of sugar, you will have a better idea of what your friend wants. As you may refer from my example, units are utilized to give our measurements meaning. If we were reading a recipe for a cake, and the recipe called for a bunch of eggs, add some butter, and a whole lot of flour, then every person using this recipe would have a different interpretation of the amount of units um, of ingredients needed to make the cake, but rather if the recipe asks for three cups of flour, four eggs, and one cup of butter, then everybody will be able to make the cake intended by the recipe's writer. Now we'll transition into what units um, are utilized in physics. Just like the examples mentioned, physics utilizes units to give measurements meaning. For example, when it comes to time, units are measured in seconds. Instead of saying a ball fell quickly, we can say that the ball fell in three seconds, giving us a better idea of how quickly the ball fell. Second, when it comes to measuring length, the unit that length is measured in is called meters. Instead of saying the ball fell from high up, you can give a better idea by saying the ball fell 45 meters. This gives us a better picture of how high the ball up, how high the ball is. Third, this one is hardly used outside of a scientific environment, at least in the United States, because we measure pounds when buying groceries. This unit is the kilogram, which is used to measure mass. One gram is a very small amount. A paper clip is about one gram. Approximately one gram. Which is why we utilize the unit kilograms rather than grams. 1,000 grams is equal to one kilogram. I will elaborate on what exactly a gram is, especially compared to weight, in another video. And a little side note, in the US we utilize pounds when we're buying our groceries, whereas in most other countries such as Canada, they utilize kilograms, and the video I'll be making later will explain the difference and why kilograms is actually the better unit. Sorry, United States. These three measurements, time, length, and mass, 
in their respective units, seconds, meters, and kilograms, are respectively referred to as the fundamental quantities and the fundamental units. They are called fundamental because these units help compose the majority of every other unit utilized in physics, much like how the colors blue, red, and yellow are utilized to um, produce all the other colors that we utilize, such as blue and yellow making green, yellow and red making orange, and blue and red producing purple. What does this mean for the average student? If you're a high school student, you're definitely going to want to memorize these. And if you're in college, be prepared to be utilizing these in ways you would never consider. So how are fundamentals utilized? These fundamental units, seconds, meters, and kilograms, used to produce other units for measurements for alternative measurements that are utilized in physics. For example, speed is nothing more than some length traveled over a certain amount of time. Therefore, in order to um, come up with the units that are used when calculating speed, we use the unit for length meters divided by the unit for time, seconds. And it is this unit, meters per second, that are utilized, that is utilized the majority of the time when you're doing physics homework. Oh, my bad handwriting. When it comes to doing homework, of course, you'll be utilizing all sorts of units for length and seconds. For example, they might have you be utilizing kilometers over minutes or millimeters over hours. So you're going to want to pay attention to what a word problem, if you're given a word problem, the units that it, it provides you and the units that it expects you to provide the answer in. But I just want to emphasize that the majority of the time, you will be utilizing um, the fundamental units for your answers. I'll be covering more in part two of this topic, units. Thank you for watching.